The plugins that you use in Figma can either make or break your project. So in this video, we're gonna go over three amazing plugins that are gonna save you a ton of time. Stick around to the last plugin to see which one is trending right now on Twitter. Let's get into it. So the first plugin that we're gonna talk about is going to be one of my favorite plugins that I found recently working on a massive project. So it's going to be, I'm gonna go over here to Recents and we're gonna go and see Find Focus. Now Find Focus is a really interesting plugin because when you are working with a massive file with thousands of different layers, thousands of different pages, even, you know, just a ton, a ton of work, a big, big project, it's very difficult to go back and find all the interactions and all the specific examples with a specific name, you know? So if you have a massive project like this and say that you wanna change, I don't know, I want to look at all of the layers that have a specific name because I need to change the size of an icon or I need to change the size of a color. And imagine that you don't have all of these textiles written down. And by the way, this is the Figma design system, their official design system. So if you want to check it out, link in the description. But imagine you have this massive project and you don't have all these color styles and all these text styles. So if I go ahead and just remove this really quick, or that's not what I meant to do, but if I go ahead and reduce a uh, cut style, there we go. I have all of these colors here, all these text styles, and imagine I wanna find maybe all of the layers with the name frame. So frame, when you go ahead and you create a new frame inside of Figma, the automatic name that it's gonna give you is gonna be frame. So say I wanna find all the layers with the name frame, and get rid of it or change it to be a pragmatic name that you and your clients have agreed with or something like that, like component or content or something like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in frame. And when I type in frame, I will see all of the individual layers that are named frame. Now this is lazy on Figma's end because they didn't name all their layers, but obviously it's impossible to find all the, all the layers that, that you've accidentally not named. So if we look at this massive selection here, it will literally grab every single layer with the name frame. And what you can do in the end, if you want to bulk rename everything, for example, is use the shortcut command and R and it'll bring up this rename modal. And you see that it says rename 287 layers. So in this case, we can match the text or we can just rename it to anything else we want. Like for example, if we wanted to name it something like component or something maybe like, for example, we can call it content, you know, it's similar to, to calling it frame or any other name if you want to call it something, but just being able to call it content or component or object or anything like that just makes it feel more organized. And when you're passing off work like this to a client, if you have a ton of different layers, like 200 different layers with the name frame in it or frame 21517, it looks unprofessional. And this is something that I like to use a lot when I'm building massive, massive projects, just like this one with all these different layers, you know, 287 layers called frame. Okay, let's just quickly rename this, make sure that it's set for the client, set for the presentation, and we're not gonna look silly presenting it. And they're gonna be like, you know, what is that? Uh, here, there's another example, rectangle 471. Let's go ahead and do it again. So we're gonna call in a rectangle and it's just gonna find all the individual rectangles. And you know, in most cases it's fine because it's within a union or within intersection or something like that. But you know what? Instead of rectangle, let's go ahead and call it something like, you know, this is 1600 layers. So maybe shape, and then we can use the number here. And arguably this is the exact same thing as, as calling it rectangle or shape, but whatever. This is more organized. It looks a little bit nicer. And that's, that's all that matters when we're presenting to clients, right? So the next plugin that we're gonna talk about here is gonna be one that a lot of people have already used, but if you don't know about it, this is one of the most critical plugins in Figma that you need. It's one of the most popular ones, but arguably the most important ones. So let's say here that I've got this frame and I'm just going to give it a random heading here. So heading H1, going to give it a nice OHQ H1 and we're going to give it a frame here. So let's go ahead and duplicate this a bunch of different times, something like this. And we're going to go ahead and select all the individual frames here, or we can just select in this case because it's quite easy. So we've selected all the frames that we have in this case, right? So what do we do if we want to add an image to all of these frames individually? Stock footage or stock images that are from the internet, something that isn't necessarily ours, but we want to populate these, these designs. What do we do? We could either one, go individually into these stock sites and buy, license, pay for all these images, plug it in, and then send it off to the client. Or we could use something like Unsplash. If I go ahead and run this plugin right here, I run it and then I can choose from all these different collections. So maybe abstract, maybe minimal, maybe nature. Now, if we're working on a nature-based project like natural food bars or something like that, okay, then let's go ahead and click on nature. And then maybe it's gonna populate images that are based off of nature in our project. So if we're working on something massive with a lot of different pages, then this is gonna save you a ton of time. You don't need to go in picking individual images. You can select all the images that you want to add in or change. And look at this, it's just gonna give you a ton of different examples 
examples of images relating to nature. Now, a lot of these are gonna be a little bit basic, a little bit stock, but you know what? It's free, it's fast, and this is all you really need for, for most MVPs. When you launch an actual site, you can use these images, by the way, because they're from Unsplash, but when you wanna launch an actual project, then maybe you have your the real images, you know, or the real content that you wanna put in. But this is equally as important as using the Lorem Ipsum plugin. This is a bonus, not part of the, the top three that I'm gonna talk about, but this is a bonus here. But if I want to change this, say from example, heading one to just a Lorem Ipsum or something that, that is gonna fill the text instead of saying heading one or heading two or heading whatever, you know, we can either do generate with words. So say we want to put in two words. So I'm going to go ahead and generate that and it'll generate lorem ipsum. Or what we can do is we can auto generate and it's going to perfectly fill the frame container that we have selected. So in this case, you see that blue rectangle there, that's the current selection. So it's going to go ahead and auto generate to fill anywhere in between that space. So in this case, we've got, for example, here, that's a little bit of a mistake on lorem ipsum's part. I'm just going to run that again, generate and it generated something lorem ipsum based. So that's pretty Perfect. These two components are great together because you can generate a lot of lorem ipsum text, fill the, the content that you want to fill, and also fill in the images that you need to fill. A lot of fills there. But lastly, the plugin that is trending everywhere right now, especially on Twitter and all these different spaces. Follow me on Twitter, by the way, if you haven't already, so you can get in contact with me and see what I'm up to. But that plugin is going to be Magician. Now I'm going to go ahead and run the home here, and we're going to play around with it for a little while. So inside a Magician, to give you the rundown of what Magician is, it's AI based creation inside of Figma. So you can either generate icons, copy or images. That is the basic rundown. So if I wanted to exchange all of these for icons, or if I wanted to go ahead and just create icons out of thin air, and if I had an idea of something nature based or something along the lines of that, so maybe we could say something like a natural or you know what camping, camping in the forest, it'll give us a creation of camping in the forest as an icon. And while that loads, oh, now we can see there. So we can see that it's created a tent, some trees. This is pretty similar to what I was thinking. So we can go ahead and click that and it'll vectorize it and implement it directly into your project. So it's absolutely crazy that you can do these things these days inside of Figma directly. You don't need to go into OpenAI or anything like that. This comes directly from the plugin. Now we can go ahead and change this. So these are all vectors, you know, these aren't PNGs there. They're completely vectorized, which is incredible. The next thing that we can do with Magician, I'm gonna go ahead and run home, is that we can also generate copy. Now this one's a little bit more complex. It's not just generating icons, but say we wanna create something to to fill in this space here instead of Lorem Ipsum, we can create a headline for a hiking company. And I'm just making these up, but a headline for a hiking company. Now, there's a few different ways that we can create these texts. We can either, and by the way, the suggestions, the creations that it gave us was explore the great outdoors with our hiking company, take a journey with our hiking company. You know, it's good. It's out of thin air, so it's, it's better than nothing. But then we can go ahead and select what it just placed down for us. So explore the great outdoors with our hiking company, go into edit. So we see write and edit, and we can have a few different options here. We can either get alternatives, so it'll create synonyms of our outputs, translate, fix grammar, summarize, or explain like I'm five years old. This one is my favorite because if we see what suggestions they give us, it's a pretty great way of dumbing down your website. If sometimes if it, if it sounds too smart or too, too many big words, your users might be lost, you know? So this is a great way to kind of dumb it down, make sure that everybody's gonna understand it and your message is super duper clear. So in this example, come join us for a fun hike. Let's go explore the outdoors together, you know? Maybe that's, that's a better H1, you know? I'm not, I'm not too sure but so that covers magician or magic copy and then last is magic image so i'm gonna go ahead and select this image here and let's go hiking in nature and what it'll do is it'll create an ai image inside of figma directly based on our brief on the message that we want to give it right so in this case it gives us these images and you know one of, one of the things that i do want to improve on this app that i think could be improved is the size of these images i can't really see anything but i'm gonna go ahead and pick this one and you know it is ai so it's it's still in its infancy but this is a pretty great image that we can use right off the bat gonna delete this one place it in here select this so we're just filling oh we're just filling oh if it allowed me okay I'm gonna do 56 for an h1 pretty standard stuff let's do something like that you know what this is great you know ai just did a website for us directly in figma i'm gonna pick something Ooh, maybe something moody you know you never know and maybe like sign up i'm just having fun right now this isn't even part of the video anymore but there you go that's a hero header waiting to be designed right there but anyways guys these three plugins four actually a little bonus one but these plugins are some of the best plugins that i use almost on the daily now and especially that last magician one especially for the icons it's something that i wish i had years ago starting out but now i have it so i can't really complain but anyways these plugins is what i use every single day they're super fast they help me with my workflow they help me understand all the different layers all the different frames i can rename things i can send things to clients a lot faster so 
I recommend all these different plugins. The links to everything is going to be in the description as always. So if you guys have any questions, let them know down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can or maybe not. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.